Hello YouTube, thanks a lot for tuning in. Welcome to my vlog number four from Beijing, China 2022 Winter Olympics where I am fortunate enough to be qualified for my second Olympic Games. My name is Victor Halthorpe. I'm a Danish long track speed skater racing the 5000 meter and the mass start. But today in this vlog, I will be telling you a little bit about how crazy the whole media boss is and how much media attention you get at the Winter Olympics and how that feels and how it's all organized here in the Olympic Village and at our skating venue. It is a big uh, mess in some ways, but they're really good at organizing it. And I've been impressed how well they protect us athletes and how smoothly the communication and all the interviews and all the, the journalist talks uh, kind of works out here. So uh, just to give you a bit of insight in that a uh, few people get to experience this and feel it in real life. But um, that's also why I thought it would be really cool for me to share with you guys so you have an idea of how it all functions when all of a sudden, especially when coming from a sport like speed skating, it's not popular in Denmark and it's not that famous a sport, how you go from being this underground skater that nobody knows about and all of a sudden you're at the Olympics. I think I am probably the most spoke off athlete from the Danish delegation. So there's a lot of attention, a lot of cameras pointing my direction at the Olympics. Thankfully, I enjoyed that a lot. I think it's super cool. I like being an ambassador for the sport, for winter sports in general in my country. So I'm having a good time doing it, um, but it's also important to stay focused on what I'm here to do, perform, skate, skate to my best. So um, it's mixed feelings in some ways. One of the things that I've done here is that two days prior to my competitions, I do not talk to any media and everything goes through my coach so that he will be the filter and, uh, and really decide which uh, articles, which shows, which interviews are worth uh, being part of and what they're uh, agendas are. <laughs> so I try my best to only participate in what I would enjoy doing. Thankfully, the Danish journalists and most of the international ones are super kind people and they're really respectful. They have a good uh, idea of what it's like to be an athlete and are very understanding. But some of the precautions that the Olympics themselves, uh, IOC, the Chinese uh, host, that they made here is that there is a media zone. Um, so there's no journalists, there's no photographers, videographers inside the Olympic Village. That is super cool. Um, so it feels more like a normal life. There is one specific place in the Olympic Village where we have to go um, in order to talk to journalists, in order to, um, to participate in any media production. This way you're kind of uh, shielded to that. And it's also super simple. You always know where to go at what time. Uh, to get in contact with uh, with TV guys. Um, it's a nice place, it's outdoors, it can be a little cold, it's, it's really nice. Um, and that's where we do the interview. The plaza is also where you can uh, get in contact with media or where media can get in contact with you. So if I flip the camera. Right over there is where you can do interviews and where you can do all press kind of stuff. Due to the, the big time difference, there's at least to Europe, to Denmark where I'm from, there's an eight or seven hour time difference uh, with Beijing. So it's often really late in the day, uh, but it kind of goes all right with my racing schedule, which is I have all my races in the afternoon. So same goes for my workouts that we tried to arrange that. So it's also in the afternoon. So it doesn't bother me too much. And a lot of it is on the phone or at our skating venue. Of course, it's more interesting for, for people to watch us when we're, um, when we're out skating or when I'm at the rink. So a lot of it is, um, is while I'm training um, and that's not too bad either. I do it after my workouts and, and then I, I give interviews in the media zone just like we do um, after races. They only get 90 seconds with each athlete after a competition. Um, so that kind of <laughs> protects you as well because if you're really tired, um, maybe if it's a bad race. Thankfully, I had two appearances at the Olympics and uh, so far both of them have been been pretty good, positive experiences. So, um, so I really haven't tried the whole um, interview part when you're disappointed. And I can imagine that if it doesn't go like you want it, 90 seconds can be a long time already. So that's kind of nice to do it that way. We do actually, uh, in each delegation, have a little media room. So we have a background that says, in our case, all for Denmark and there's some Danish flags. So we can do live interviews from, from basically our own house almost. And you can, you can be, live on TV in Denmark and you can you can share that experience. I mean, that's the reason we do this is share those emotions with our countries and, and being able to give back in that way. It's just it's so nice and really convenient. And especially here when family and friends can can be here and cheer. This is really the way that that you're together. If you have any questions to any of these media things, how they work, 
um, just leave a comment if you have any questions to whatever it might be here at the Olympics. I, I'll be super glad to, to respond to that or you make a specific vlog on it. There's already uh, three vlogs, three vlogs uh, online. So check those out and uh, there's for sure more to, more to come. You can see in the description what my next topic, topics are going to be and maybe I'll add some to that. But for now, thanks a lot for watching this. It's, it's super fun. It's super cool making these and I'm just glad to share, share the experience with uh, all the people out there watching. So see you for next time.